Drawing is so important, and it's the thing that holds a lot of us back as we get into painting. Today we're gonna to talk about specifically drawing for watercolor painting. And I'm gonna give you the three keys that really helped my drawing and helped me become a more proficient painter because of it. Now, if you're like me, you didn't go to art school and study drawing. I didn't have someone teach me the principles of perspective and composition and important things that I felt like I needed to know about drawing. So when I would hear that drawing is the most important part, drawing is the foundation of your painting, that was intimidating to me. So if you're like me and drawing seems intimidating to you, I have some good news for you. It doesn't have to be this complicated. Let's talk about what drawing for watercolor specifically needs to be. First of all, what drawing isn't. We are not trying to draw a standalone piece of artwork. We don't need to sketch a beautiful scene with lots of feeling and emotion and wonderful shading. That's not what we need to be thinking about. Drawing is simply how we can lay out our scene, how we can think through our composition and set ourselves up for success as we work through the different steps of our painting. Now, because we paint in reverse, because we paint from light to dark, in each layer of our painting, we need to be mindful of the light that we are preserving. And because this is the case, drawing is very important to this process. Maybe more so than other mediums, because the drawing is our roadmap. The drawing is our guide. Now, it doesn't need to be its own standalone piece of artwork. Some artists have very beautiful renderings, very expressive drawings before they move into the painting process. I'm not too concerned about that. What I wanna think about is setting up my composition and giving me a clear plan on the lights that I need to preserve as I move forward and through the scene. So I'm gonna go through my process in drawing for a painting. What I like to do first is establish my horizon. That gives me my first clue in my composition. Is the sky more dominant? Is the ground more dominant? That's a good question to ask yourself. And after you've determined that, place your horizon line in your scene. Now, after you establish the horizon line, you can think about the major shapes of your painting. Where do you want the focal area to be? Typically, we want it to be on a third of the scene. So you can lay out those next. And here's where it gets interesting. These are some tips that I've picked up and things that have helped me as I've gotten more and more experience through the years. Tip number one, keep your hand on the paper as much as you can. So I've heard this several times from different artists. If you're keeping your hand on the paper, you're able to keep your place as you move through the scene and draw it. If I draw a little piece here and then move over here and a little piece here, what I'm missing out on is the connection and the relationship between these two pieces. And if I'm drawing and coming back, I'm gonna lose my place in my drawing. This is really helpful when you're trying to draw more accurately. Keep your hand, keep your pencil on the paper as much as you can. Point number two, and this is something I continually have to work on, but draw shapes rather than objects. Try to see things as they really are. Look at the shapes of the object rather than getting obsessed with what every little thing is around the scene. See them as shapes rather than objects. We become more precise when we can use this approach. I found this particularly helpful when I started to paint cars because I would automatically have an idea of how the top of this car should look because I've seen cars my entire life. So I would try to draw them from memory. Even, you know, at different angles, that can be really tricky. But once I started to think about them just as shapes and look at them as they really are, the top is just a rectangle that's a little skewed on this one side and the bottom is twice as large as the top. That's the type of thing that you want to be thinking as you're drawing. And tip number three is constantly compare shapes to each other. This is a good way to stay more accurate as you're drawing. The top of this car lines up the midway point of this building, constantly comparing back and forth. The bottom of this car hits the bottom of this. This figure's head is about as tall as this car. As you move around the scene, constantly compare your shapes to each other and reference the different areas to make sure that it is accurate as a whole. If you get hyper-focused on drawing one particular thing and then move on to something else in your scene, the odds of them being in scale together are pretty slim. So you need to constantly be comparing the two parts 
as you work your way around the scene to complete your drawing. So first of all, take some pressure off of yourself. Realize what the drawing for your painting needs to be. And I promise you, if you can keep your hand on the paper, if you can draw shapes rather than objects, and if you can compare as you do your drawing, you will see a big difference as you move forward. If you are looking to take the next step in your painting, I have a free video lesson for you. The seven secrets of fresh and powerful painting. Now in this video lesson, I talk about how to plan your painting, how to mindfully paint your scene, and most importantly, how to put down the brush before you overwork your painting. Now, when you sign up for this video lesson, I also send you a pre-painting checklist. Now, this is something that you can hang on to and look at before each one of your paintings. And it's gonna ensure that you're thinking through the right things and that you're on track when you start your painting. Now, in addition to that, I include my watercolor supplies guide. So if you have questions about my brushes, pigments, paper, things that I use, then check out my watercolor supplies guide. Now it's simple to get started with this. All you have to do is follow this link right here to get to the seven secrets of fresh and powerful painting. I'll see you there.